fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. the western United States, the deeds of the famous masked rider of justice will never be forgotten. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, and his great horse, Silver, he fought crime wherever he found it. No odds were too great for him to face. And to the mysterious phantom figure of the plains belongs the greatest credit for the triumph of law and order in the old west. And now, adventure beckons on the trail ahead once more. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, old fellow! There are rustlers in Black Hawk Valley. Stretch out those great legs of yours. Hi-yo, silver. Away. As the Lone Ranger rode by on silver, he said that rustlers were active. Between the Black Hawk Valley and the border lay a range of hills cut by numberless winding canyons. Most of these canyons were covered with what is known in the southwest as Malpais. That is, hardened lava, spilled there by volcanic disturbances ages ago. The rough canyon floors, too flint-like to receive the marks of hoofs, served the purpose of rustlers who wished to move stolen cattle without leaving a trail behind. It is night as our first act opens. A small herd of cattle bedded down near the hills is suddenly disturbed by shots and approaching horsemen. Get up! Come on! Get up! Get him moving, boys! Start these cows toward the hills! I'll head him off from this way, Rusty. Don't let him circle. Keep him on the run till we get into the canyon. Get along there, you bleeding critters. Get along there. Uh, them cows are sure running the legs off, Rusty. We ain't got much time. There's a bunch of the ranchers over to Clay Rimps' place right now. If they heard them shots, they'll be hightailing their troops as fast as they can. We won't waste no time. We'll head them for the canyon we used last time. That's the nearest. It'll do as good as any. Sure. Get along. Come on, you critters. Keep moving. How many cows you figures in this bunch? Well, I'd say there couldn't be less than 400. That'd be my guess. <laughs> the boys have sure got things figured slick. We're doing all right. Say, ain't that the mouth of a canyon right ahead? That's it. Ain't got much farther to go until we're safe. All right, you blame on Rick. Let step along there. Keep moving before I speed you up with hot lead. Oh, on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clay Remsen, the largest cattle owner in the valley, had taken the lead in the fight upon the rustlers. A meeting that included the sheriff and a group of valley ranchers was in progress at Remsen's home when they were disturbed by the shots of the rustlers. They immediately left the house and rode in pursuit. Now we see them on the rocky approach to the hills. The sheriff is speaking to Remsen. Well, Clay, I reckon we'll have to give up. There ain't a chance to pick up the trail of the rustlers once they get into the hills. But confound it, Sheriff, we gotta do something. They got most 400 head of my stock this time. I know that, Clay. What can we do? There ain't a man alive can read the trail of your cattle in the canyons in spite of this bright moon we've been going by. And in 24 hours, they'll be across the border and I'll never see them again. Clay, we'll catch them rustlers one of these days. I'm beginning to wonder about that. Yeah? There's been rustling in Black Hawk Valley for the past three years. And not a blame rustler's been jailed yet. Look here, man. 
How many of your cows been stole? Yeah, two years ago, I was ranging more than 5,000 head. Now I ain't got 2,000. And I've lost twice that many. Tompkins down the valley just about wiped out. Shelby come to me yesterday to ask if I'd buy his brand so he could get a start somewhere else. And it weren't a month ago I bought Sanger out for the same reason. I've been doing the best I can. Then your best ain't good enough. Meaning? Meaning I'm sick of losing cows every week or so. I'm thinking it's about time we got a sheriff and give us some protection. Now, hold on a minute. I want results, and by golly, I'm going to see that I get them. You feel the same as Clay does, Matt? Well, Dave, I always liked you, but things can't go on like this any longer. I've been thinking of selling out myself. You have? Only I don't know who'd want to buy the way things is. I never figured you was a man to give up. I ain't much choice left. I can tell you the rain of rustler living will force me out of business. I'm going to see this thing through to the finish. The odds are against you, Clay. I wouldn't advise you to buck them. If the rest of you fellas won't back me up, I'll fight them coyotes alone. You will? I never yet said anything I didn't mean. You're taking on a mighty big task, Clay. Look at the way this here valley lies. All that's between it and the border is these hills, and there's at least 50 canyons cutting through them with solid rock bottoms that don't show trail signs. I know that. It'd take a 100 men to do any good. We'd have to block every canyon, and that just ain't possible. Maybe it ain't for you, but I got a plan. What are you figuring on, Clay? First off, I'm buying Shelby spread, just like I bought Sanger's. And I'll buy yours too, Matt, if you want to get out. I want men that can fight in this valley. Are you serious about buying my spread, Clay? I sure am. Then I'll take you up on it. You're a single man, and you can afford to stay here. But I got my family to think about. I got to make a living for them. Then drop around, see me in the morning. We'll talk terms. I'll do that. I'm blame sorry about this, Matt. There ain't a final range in the valley. I ain't blaming you, Sheriff. Neither am I. But I ain't sitting back no longer doing nothing We're either. We're all willing to do what we can for you, Clay. You've failed too many times. From now on, I'm dependent on just one fella. And that's myself. I'm getting back to the house now. Yeah, we might just as well. Them rustlers stumped us this time for sure. But there'll be a next time. And that's when they better watch out. Get up there. Get yeah. up. Later that same night, we see the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, camped beside one of the narrow canyons leading southward through the hills toward the border. It was scarcely five minutes after they'd extinguished the flame of their campfire when Silver uttered a shrill whinny. What is it, Silver, old fellow? What's the matter? Something wrong. Trying to give us a warning. Do you hear anything, Kimosabe? Uh-huh. Me hear plenty. What is it, Tonto? You wait. You here? No? Yes, I do. Cattle are moving down this valley. Uh. And horsemen are driving them this way. Not strange thing. It is. And there's no good grazing land south of the hill except beyond the border. The cattlemen would wait until daylight to drive their stock. Unless... What you think? Unless they're rustlers. Oh. The herd will go directly past us. And I don't believe we can be seen up here. Oh. Them not see us. Tonto, it was only one chance in a thousand that led us to camp beside this valley tonight. Uh, but we're going to take advantage of that chance. Here, Silver. We're going to learn where this herd is being taken. That's plenty good plan. Right, fella. Yep. It'll be easy to follow them. The noise they make will guide us while we stay out of sight. Mm, that, that right. They won't be out of the hills until daylight. And then we can drop still further behind and follow the trail they leave. That's plenty easy. Someone across the border is receiving these cows. First, we'll find out who he is. What? Then. And then perhaps we can find out who's in charge of the rustling on this side of the border. Oh. Right, Tonto. They're almost below us. We'll let them pass before we take up their trail. The masked man and Tonto followed the herd throughout the night. In the morning when the cattle were permitted to halt for water, they remained carefully hidden. When at last the herd reached its destination across the border just after nightfall, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were close behind they watched from a shelter of a grove of trees while the cattle were driven into a large corral. This is where the cattle are taken, Kimosabe. On this side of the border, the law can do nothing. Mm, that bad thing. These men are getting rich. And the cattlemen in the valley are losing everything they own. Tonto know that. Tonto, look at that man in charge. Oh, him, fellow named Dawson. Rusty Dawson. Not him, all right. And Rusty is Remsen's foreman. That means that at least one of Remsen's men is dishonest. He's selling out the man he's working for. Him, plenty bad color. That explains why the rustlers always took cattle that weren't guarded. That explains why none of the traps set for the rustlers by the cattlemen succeeded. Rusty had that information and could act upon it. Isn't that right? I wonder, though, if Rusty is the real head of the rustlers. Mm, me not think that. How do I? 
Maybe the man who receives the cattle. Mm. And maybe someone in Black Hawk Valley. From what I've heard of Rusty, I doubt that he could organize a thing as big as this. Maybe Sheriff Rustler. It could be the sheriff. In the three years the rustlers have been active, he's never captured one of them. Uh. But these are only guesses. Now is our chance to learn more. The men are finished with the cattle. You not plan? Rusty went into the house with the man who seemed to be in charge here. Uh, me, see, fella. Yeah. Come, Tom. The men have gone to the bunkhouse, and it's too dark for us to be seen. We'll get as close to the house as we can. Uh. Yeah, we... Perhaps we can hear enough to help us. They left no guard outside. I suppose they feel safe this side of the border. Well, you can handle them cows from here on, Buck. You just leave it to me, Rusty. There's about 400 of them by my count. Did you look them over? Mm-hmm. 400 is right. When do you think you can turn them over to the buyer? Oh, it'll be another week, anyhow. It's a hard drive for them cows from the valley. I'll let them rest for a couple of days before I send them out on the trail again. That's a good idea. But there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah? Did you bring any money this trip? Why, well, you see, Buck. So you I... didn't, huh? Just how long do you figure I'm going to wait for my cut? You won't have to wait much longer, Buck. You're darn tootin' I won't. You can tell... Hold on there. Don't you go mentioning the boss's name. Oh, it's a harm. We're alone, ain't we? That's orders, and you know it. You and me are the only two fellows that savvy who the boss of this setup is. And even we ain't to mention him by name. But, uh... There's a couple of your men in the next room. And maybe they ain't sleeping. We're not to take chances. All right, all right. All I'm doing is telling you what the boss said. Just the same, that don't change what I was going to say. You tell the boss for me that either I get the cash it's owned to me, or we're not doing business together anymore. You don't need to worry about your share, none. I never did like this way of doing things anyhow. Yeah? I turn the cattle over to the buyer, but I don't collect no cash. The boss does that himself. Sure he does. And that means I got to wait for my cut. Now, uh, why in blazes can't I collect and send him the cash? Well, you ought to know better than that. The boss don't take chances on nobody. I feared I'll double-cross him, huh? Well, that's the way he looks at it. it. Ain't none of my doing, though. If I swore it was... Well, take it easy, Buck. It won't do you a mighty good to kick any. When the boss decides on something, that's the way it's got to be. Well, you can tell him for me that I don't trust nobody either. Meaning just what? Meaning that I want my cash turned soon. He was to bring me my cut for the cows that was brought over the trip before. But there's been four trips in a row now without no payoff. How much you figure is owing you? Four thousand dollars. And that ain't enough when you stop to consider he's using my men for his work. The boss reckoned you might be getting kind of restless. Yeah? So we said to tell you there were some other things you needed the cash for right now. Now look here. But if you had to have it, he said he'd raise it somehow and send it over. Oh, that's more like it. I gotta head back for the valley right soon. I can't be staying away too long or someone will be suspicious. Uh-huh. It won't take me long for the trip riding alone. I'll tell the boss what you said, and I figure I could be back here with the cash by Thursday night. That suits you? If you ain't here Thursday night, I'm going to raise plenty of trouble. I'm telling you that right now. I'll be here. I'll come in after dark. And when you bring the cash, you can let me know when you'll be needing my boys for another raid. I'll do that. But from the way things look, I reckon it'll be a couple of weeks or more before we be helping ourselves to valley cattle again. Come, Tonto. We didn't get the information we needed most, but we can't stay here longer. Rusty will be leaving soon. No, we not learn much. We don't know who's at the head of the rustling gang. We do know it's neither Rusty or Buck. Uh. What's more, Rusty and the chief of the gang must be the only two who are on the other side of the border. From what they said, Buck's men are brought over to do the rustling. Mm, that right. And that means that unless Buck's gang can be captured on the other side of the border, the law can't touch them. That make it plenty hard. Here we are, Kimasabi. Quiet, Silver. You... What? What we do now? Tonto, we're going to make our camp as close to this ranch as possible. I believe I have a plan that will trap both the chief and the gang. Come on, Get on point, The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, hearing rustlers driving stolen cattle through a narrow canyon leading from the Black Hawk Valley to the border, followed them to their destination. In the meantime, the ranchers in the valley decided they could no longer afford to raise cattle when rustlers could steal them so easily. Our second act opens the next morning in Remsen's large ranch house. The sheriff and Matt Gilroy, another rancher, are present. Clay Remsen is speaking. Well, Matt, do you still figure on selling out? I do if you ain't changed your mind, Clay. But I wouldn't blame you if you had. These rustlers are a darn tough proposition. Hmm. They ain't gonna drive me out in the valley. What do you drop in for, Sheriff? I reckon you know you ain't too welcome here. I didn't come from choice. Matt asked me to witness agreement between you. That all right with you, Clay? Yeah, but I shouldn't think you'd be feeling very friendly toward the sheriff either. If he'd done his job like he should have, you wouldn't have to sell out. Shucks. I ain't holding nothing against nobody but them blamed rustlers. Well, then let's get down to business. What kind of a price do you think you can give me, Clay? How many head of cattle you got left? Mm, they ought to run close to 2,000 head. Mm, I ain't so sure. You've been losing a heap of cows. Oh, I don't reckon they'll run much under that. Hey, there, Clint Shelby outside. I've been expecting him. Didn't you say something last night about him wanting to sell out too, Clay? Uh-huh. Looks to me like there ain't a one of you with the nerve to hang on when things are going tough. Come on in, Flint. Well, Clay, I rode over like you told me to. Howdy, fellas. Hello, uh, Flint. Howdy, Flint. Matt here wants me to buy his spread. Well, I figured as long as the both of you want to sell out, I'd talk to you together. That suits me. But the only reason I'm buying is to show them rustlers that all the ranchers in the valley ain't yellow. No need to talk that away, Clay. Well, Dad read it all. It makes me sick to see a bunch of thieving polecats drive common out of the finest grazing land in these parts. And I'm blaming you most of all, Sheriff, for letting them get away with it. Now, look here. I... The won't get us no place. Yeah, all right. I feel like Matt does. If I can't make a living here, I'm going where I can. How many head of cattle you got left, Lind? I can't say offhand. Maybe 3,000, maybe more. Mm. I got a proposition to make. In the first place, I ain't going to pay the market price for cows that maybe will be stole off me. We don't figure on holding you up any. I'll pay you a flat price of $10 a head. Half down the rest of the year from now. And that's as high as I can go. I don't know. Yeah, if that's your price, I'll take it. I ain't in no position to bargain. And if you're willing, Matt, I'll take the same. Good enough. And I'll send my riders with yours to make account of the cows you got left. We can get a close enough estimate that way. Just as you say. I'm agreeable. Then when the count's made, we'll get together again and I'll pay you your first half. Why are you going to get the cash to swing a deal like that, Clay? The bank in town will lend me the money. They've got it. If all the cattlemen leave the valley, they'll go bust. You fellas agree to the terms I just stated? It's settled as far as I'm concerned. And the quicker I sell, the better pleased I'll be. Then we'll start the count the first thing in the morning. I'll send my men around at daybreak. While the ranchers counted their herds, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the ranch across the border that received the stolen cattle. On the night appointed by Rusty to deliver the cash to the outlaw, Buck, they rode to a position beside the trail leading to Buck's ranch. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. These trees will hide us from the trail, Tonto. Uh, this is the way Rusty will have to come when he brings the money to Buck. Matt, right. Quiet, Silver. When he arrives, Kimosabe, we must make sure he doesn't escape us. If he does, our plan will fail. Him not get way. We know he hasn't delivered the money yet. But it's possible he may be delayed. What you do then? In that case, we'll have to wait until he does arrive. Uh, maybe Listen, him... Tonto. I believe I hear a horse now. Huh? That horse, all right. May not be rusty, but we'll soon know. There, color come. And it is rusty. We got here just in time. Get ready to stop him, Tonto. Me ready. Now, Tonto, come on, Get stop it. Stop your horse! Hey, what is this? What the... Stop for oil fire! Oh, man, it's wait. Get up there! Get up there! Oh, you don't! You get them bridled! You stop us! Oh, get your brother! Oh, my! 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 Oh,
Look here, Vincent, let me go. I'll pay you plenty. I'll give you all kinds of cash. You like... keep them still. Or Tonto fix them, you. Oh, girl, the boss is sure going to be sore when he hears about this. While the Lone Ranger raced away on Silver, Buck awaited the arrival of the money that was due him. He's complaining to one of his men. What in blazes is keep Rusty anyhow? If he don't show up with that cash right soon, I'm going across the border after him. No use getting excited, boss. It ain't late yet. It's late enough. You don't figure anything could have gone wrong, do you? The only thing I figure is that maybe they got a notion that they can keep me from getting my money. Oh, they wouldn't do that. Things have been going mighty funny lately. I should have had most of this cash a month ago. Yeah, that's a fact, all right. And all Rusty's been doing is stalling me off. Well, if he don't come tonight, there's going to be a showdown. Can't say as I blame you any, boss. But I wouldn't fly off the handle if I was you. Maybe Rusty just got delayed. Well, I ain't standing for no... Boss, look, it's a masked man. What in thunder? I tell you that Rusty won't be here. Who are you? What do you know about him? I'm here in Rusty's place. Huh? You've seen Rusty for the last time. And there'll be no more stolen cattle coming this way. Now, what's he mean, boss? I don't know. But I'm blamed soon going to find out. Steady. I have you covered. Oh, you. you were expecting money for the cattle you handled. Well, here it is. They sent you with the money? You see it there, don't you? Boss, that ain't the money. There ain't enough of it. There's $500 there. 500 Yes, and don't ask for more. That's all you're going to get. Look here. We're I... cutting you out, Buck. That 500 will cover your expenses. But we're keeping the profits for ourselves. Boss, you was right. They're double-crossing us. If you think you can get away with this... We are getting away with it. Double-cross me, will you? You're lucky to get 500 Take my advice and don't try to make trouble. You'll regret it if you do. I'm going to show you. You fellas will pay for this. Stand where you are. Don't try to follow me. If only I had a gun. I value your health. Stay on this side of the border. We have a way of dealing with people who try to make trouble. Let's get it. Wait. Let him go. Huh? Call the boys instead. We'll show him if we're going to stay on this side of the border or not. There he goes. The blazes with him. Call the boys, like I said. We're riding to the valley? You bet we are. If we ride hard, we can be there by morning. Then you watch the fur fly. Flint Shelby and Matt Gilroy kept their crews working steadily in an effort to get the count of their cattle as soon as possible. They finished at last, and on the following morning, accompanied by the sheriff, they went to Remsen's home to complete the sale of their stock. We see the four men in Remsen's living room. Matt is speaking. 1,700 head is what I got, Clay. That's a tally made by my men and the fellas you sent over. Uh-huh. That's what they said. How many did you find, Flint? 2,300. And I can't hardly believe it yet. Just a year ago, I was grazing more than 5,000. It's a darn lucky for us Clay is willing to buy. We wouldn't have a cow left in another year if he didn't. I can't get out of the valley too soon to suit me. It's sure a shame things had to happen this way, fellas. If that's the way you feel about it, Sheriff, why didn't you do something to catch them rustlers? I ain't going to argue with you no more, Clay. I done the best I could, and no man can do better than that. Well, when election time comes, it ain't likely you'll be sitting in office again. Maybe we can get somebody that'll be some good to us. You got our checks ready, Clay? In just a minute, I'll make them out. I figure my check will come to 8500 I'm writing it out now. And mine's 11500 do There'll be in no rush. I'll get to yours in a second, Flint. I got the papers and everything ready for signing and turning over to you, Clay. The sheriff and Flint can witness mine, and me and the sheriff will witness Flint's papers. Yeah, there. $8,500. It's all made out and signed. And I still ain't sure, but what I'm a darn fool for paying that much. Ooh. Hey, who are them fellows? Strangers to me. Ooh, strangers to me, too. But they're mighty tough-looking hombres. All right, you dirty double-crossing snake. Put up your hands. Hey, who are you talking to? Huh? What's the meaning of this? Keep your guns on these fellows, boys. I'll talk to Clay here. You're out, Walt. What is this, a hold-up? I'm a law here. You can't do this. Shut up. My business ain't with you. It's with this double-dealing coyote over here. Get out of here. I don't want to talk like that. I didn't think you would. What's your business with you, Clay? I... I'll tell you our business. This crooked snake's been stealing your cattle. Then when me and my boys do most of his dirty work for him, he tries to cheat us out of our cash. And by golly, he's going to eat lead for it. I never, I never, I tell you. You sent me 500 when you owed me 4000 It's a mistake. I sent the 4000 I sent it with Rusty last night. You're lying. I never got it. 
And anybody tries to cross me, ain't got long to live. So you're the ornery skunk who's been doing all the rustling. Sheriff, listen to me. I and t- you was going to buy me out after you stole most of my cattle. That blasted polecat, he was going to buy me out, too. And that's the reason you sent the mask fella to tell me you weren't going to do business with me no more. You took the money you owed me to help buy them out. Then, with you owning most everything in the valley, there won't no need for you to rustle cows anymore. Uh, uh, it's the but... same mess. Uh, uh, what? What's your gun, Buck? Tell your men to do the same. Not on I have you all covered. But I could, if we don't, he'll shoot, boss. I, I reckon they got us, fellas. Better do what he says. Stick up those guns, Sheriff. You and Matthew Flint can guard these men. We'll guard them, all right. Say, stranger, where did you come from? Tonto and I followed Buck here. We set a trap for him, and he was caught in it. What do you mean, a trap? I stopped Rusty last night and took the $4,000 from him. Then I delivered 500 to you. I knew you would be angry enough to go after the man you thought had cheated you. Then then you did send the money, Clay. You oh, blame fool. You fell for a trick and gave the whole game away. And a darn lucky thing from Matt and Flint here that he did. Rusty's outside tied to his horse. We made him talk on the way here. Ramson stole from himself as well as the other ranchers in the valley, so that suspicion wouldn't be pointed his way. He was plenty smart, but not quite smart enough to fool the mask man. And I'll see the whole lot of you jail for this, Clay. You'll find the rest of the money I took from Rusty on the table here beside the door, Yeah, but wait. Hey, don't leave. I want to thank you. Don't let him leave, Sheriff. He saved my ranch. Come here. Come back here. There ain't no chance of thanking him the way he's traveling. But there's one thing we can do, and that's finish the job he's done for us. Come on, you ordinary thieves. You're going to jail. Come on, Silver! There's danger and adventure on the trail ahead! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>